Welcome to TV Medsys How to Transfers Within the U.S., otherwise known as interjurisdictional. In the next couple of minutes, I will run through an example of how we have integrated interjurisdictional notifications, IJNs for short, with Medsys. Medsys, as you know, is a homegrown Arizona surveillance system. In contrast, IJNs are national. They are a product of the National Tuberculosis Controllers Association. The form, as well as details on how to use it, can be found on the website. So I'm now going to go ahead and take you to that website. And it is right here. Hang on just a second. Okay, so uh, here you can see that this is the National Tuberculosis Control Association website. Uh, the resources, if you go over to it, uh, there's interjurisdictional transfers right there. And now you can see where the forms are at. Um, and you can also see there is a video walkthrough on how to use the forms as well. Um, so the first thing that you're going to do, um, let's say you have a patient with, a, with tuberculosis who's moving out of state, um, but they're still within the U.S. If they're moving outside the U.S., the interjurisdictionals uh, are not used. Instead, that would be a transfer. Um, you can you can utilize Cure TB or TBNet to help facilitate that transfer outside the United States. So this is really just with, for within the U.S. Um, so the IGN form is going to summarize all the key information that the receiving jurisdiction will need in order to have continuity of care. So the first step is to download a blank form to your computer. So the links are here. So you go ahead and go in there. Now you're now going to download it. Um, and you can just save it to your desktop. You can save it to whatever, you know, the good place is for you. So go ahead and click Save. Now been saved. Um, now what I like to do is I close the web browser to make sure that I don't accidentally fill this out because if I fill out this form and uh, I've, if I fill it on online, you cannot save the information. You're going to lose all the data. So I like to go ahead and I am going to um, go ahead and close this form out. And then you'd be going to your desktop. I'm going to go ahead and move it right over here. Um, and this is what you would go ahead and you would uh, fill out. So you'd fill everything out here. And I conveniently have already filled one out for you. And it's in this part here. So the fill out, the form has already been going to become like, you know, we've already gone through the process. So let's go ahead and open it. And I want to uh, kind of show, highlight a couple different parts. Um, go ahead and leave the form sent to blank. You're going to be utilizing Medsys. So you're going to be uploading everything in there. There's no need to put down that you send it to ADHS. And what we will do is that we will fill out this section since it's a fillable form, and then you will know exactly and precisely who we sent it to and we, when we sent it out to them. Um, so the parts that you want to make sure that you definitely fill out is contact information. Um, having a phone number makes a huge difference. If you don't have contact information for that individual, you can't actually do the transfer. It is possible for us, you know, to, to do like a special notification to another jurisdiction, um, just to give them a heads up without the new address, but it's not going to be a transfer, if that makes sense. So you really need to have the phone number, really need to have like where they're going to. Um, and then the nice thing is at the top, it says which section you're going to be filling out. So for an active or suspect uh, TB, it's going to be section one. Um, you do not know how to fill out if the sections two, three, or four, unless those things applied. So what is the next thing that we want to do? Um, RBCT number. So if you don't have it, you're going to find the RBCT number in Medsys. It's assigned by ADHS. If you don't happen to have it, leave it blank. We'll go ahead and we will fill it. Um, we always make sure that we include the year and the state as part of the complete RBCT number. Um, and then for additional information, you also want to fill out Section 5 for anybody that's on treatment. Um, additional information, you can like summarize some stuff in the comments, but there's going to be other things that you can upload to Medsys 
and you want to think about the golden rule. What is it that you would want if you were the receiving jurisdiction for this individual? So include all of that um, in MedSys, and I will show you how to do that. So the next thing that you would do is that you would save it. You can see I've already saved it. Actually, let me go ahead and make one slight change. Um, they're fluttery. They flutter. Okay. So. And now you can see you save it. And um, I like to keep a master form so that you have a blank one. Um, but if you, uh, like, you're going to want to have to clear it. If you, every time that you start it, because you don't want to accidentally give, like, the wrong information and have, like, a mix of two different patients on one form. So maybe when you save it, you're just going to uh, rename it as the person so it's kind of clear to you. Um, you might do something like putting their names in. Just make sure you keep, like, the IJN part the same because we do use the IJN to kind of notify. Like, it's a good way for us to be able to immediately know that that's an interjurisdictional form. So go ahead, uh... IJN form, Tinkerbell. Okay, so there it is. So uh, what do you do now? Well, now you're going to go to MedSys, um, and I have MedSys training open. As you can see, this is not a real case. Um, get to the cases. Um, so they already have a MedSys uh, case entered, so it's really simple. Um, go to the attachment section. You're going to do a new attachment. Um, if you happen to have it already open, you can drag and drop. Um, or you can browse. So it's in this folder. Click on that. Let me see. IJN form to Neverland. Click Save. There you are. It's an attachment. Anything else you wanted to add? You just go ahead and add there. Um, and then the very last step is that you would just go ahead and email ADHS TB program. Um, use the MedSys ID number because you can see that uh, nobody's going to know that 20 286086 is associated with Tinkerbell. So you, there's no need to use a secure email. Just shoot us an email at tb at azdhs.gov. Let us know that there's an IJN that's been attached to that and uh, we will take it from there. We will put a note in when we, uh, you know, what we did and who we talked to at the other state. And so, like, you know, MedSys will continue to, to live there, and you have all the documentation of your uh, communication tool. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and flip the rules now and pretend that you are now the receiving jurisdiction. Um, so you might say, uh, when do I have to fill out forms? Well, this IJN flowchart, uh, the IJN protocol that Amanda put together, um, you can see that uh, your sections are in purple. Um, and this kind of is, this, this video is going through like how to do this, you know, purple box. Um, and on page three of this, it says when would you expect to send follow-ups or receive follow-ups? So, uh, for a case, uh, you know, within 30 days after final disposition or movement out of jurisdiction. So we're going to keep this simple and just say that this person completed treatment. We're going to say that Tinkerbell is done. So how would you do that? Well, it's basically the exact same thing that you did with the other one. You are going to go to um, the website, download the follow-up form. Go ahead and download it. Um, you can save it um, on your desktop. Let's save. Go ahead and close this out so you don't accidentally fill out the wrong form and then have to repeat everything because that is not fun. I have done that before. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this small. So the IGN follow-up form, I'm going to stick it over here. You would then, uh, you'd be able to like, rename it. You know, practice. And then you would fill it out. So you click on it, fill it out. Um, I have uh, already filled one out. I'll go ahead and close this one out to you. Underneath the how-to. And you see that uh, you can just rename the very bottom part of it. Follow-up form. Bell. Tinker. 
I totally, <laughs> I totally misspelled her name the first time, huh? <laughs> the ticker. <laughs> okay, so uh, there she is here, Tinkerbell. Um, and again, you don't have to put down that you sent it to us. Um, you can put down that's the final. Uh, when do they complete? Um, yeah, completed 26 weeks of DOT on 7-3-2020. Okay. Click save. And then you would do the exact same thing. Just go into Medsys, um, do the attachment, new attachment, browse there, click on the follow-up form, and that is it. Form completed treatment. So just put whatever you, you think would be helpful in the comments. Um, as long as you have that IJN follow-up form at the beginning as, as the title, that's really all that we need. But it is nice, you know, like uh, we, we appreciate having the comments if it is helpful for us to find the attachment. Um, you can also put notes in the notes section as well. Um, that's why I would say that, you know, uh, that I um, spoke with Peter Pan To confirmed receipt, they they received the IJN. Yeah. Okay. So that is it. If you ever have any questions about IJs, you know, just go ahead and contact us at, um, again at tb at azdhs.gov. Um, we know sometimes it gets a little bit complicated, um, but thank you very much for listening.